I'm really glad and honored to be invited to come here uh, by the uh, Union of Patriots and the fair tax people here. Uh, I actually never been to Kansas before. I've been all over the world, but I'd never been to Kansas. And when I got here, two things struck me immediately. One is that it's not in black and white. <laughs> but the other thing that struck me is how, how nice and genuinely friendly everybody is here. You know, it reminded me of when I moved to Texas in 1990. I was from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, the north. I was astounded by how friendly everybody, how polite everyone in Texas was. They always say, yes, sir, no, ma'am. And then po someone pointed out that people are always more polite when everyone's carrying a gun. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so that explained a lot. Um, <clears throat> I, my topic is not just the fair tax. It's about freedom, economic growth, and the fair tax. I've been writing a lot about the impact of economic growth. Uh, my most recent column was predicting that Newt Gingrich, as things stand, would, would become the Republican nominee simply because he is the most pro-growth of the, you know, credible candidates. So, uh, and uh, I was for, by the way, full disclosure, I was for Herman Cain. I was really bummed. Uh, I actually worked on Herman's campaign. I spent the weekend before, after Thanksgiving in Atlanta with the whole team. Um, Herman is the most impressive guy I've ever met, in all honesty. The, the media did a good job of making sure no one found out how great that guy really was. And I wish he had, you know, I understand, you know, he had to do what he had to do, but I really wish he had stayed in the race. I think he would have won, really, no matter what. Um, so, my topic is freedom, economic growth, and the fair tax. Uh, let's see, how does this... The right one? Okay, you know, here we are again. America, you know, won its freedom, had to fight for its freedom originally, and we've been fighting ever since. And one thing I want to acknowledge is for all of you for coming here on a Friday night uh, in Christmas season, to me says that you are, you care about your country and you're willing to fight for it. You're not gonna take, let them take it away from us just, you know, passively. Um, we've been fighting all kinds of things. Uh, my parents' generation, you know, fought World War II and fascism and all of that. The most insidious threat to this country now, we, we've gotten to the point where no outside power can really threaten us. I mean, we've, my parents' generation in 1941 would have been bemused by the idea that we would be worrying about foreign threats where we could incinerate the whole country in an hour, you know? I mean, that's how powerful America is relative to uh, its, its uh, foreign foes, but domestically, we've got this thing called progressivism. Uh, Obama was here uh, in Kansas a uh, week or so ago, 12th, I think, and he's proudly proclaiming statism and progressivism uh, as his, uh, this is what he's taking in the election. And uh, I want to make a couple, I mean, progressivism is, my statement is, is time-release communism. Um, it, it's incremental rather than a revolution. It's kind of an interesting concept. I mean, the, the other enemies we fought said, we're going to come and take your freedom by force. The progressives say, we're going to buy your freedom and pay you with your own money. <laughs> but ultimately, progressivism it requires a totalitarian state. You see it in Obamacare. They basically have to control everything, because if people have any freedom at all, they will use it to thwart the progressives, their will of it. It's all for your own good. And it came about about 100 years ago when a bunch of guys you know, who had degrees from good universities, decided that the country, the world, everything had become too complex for the simplistic uh, notion of government embodied in our Constitution, and all power had to be transferred to credential experts, in other words, them, and they would run everything. Um, and uh, Obamacare, there's some interesting things about Obamacare. The biggest, everything you heard about Obamacare is true, but 
to me, they did not talk about the very worst thing about Obam Obamacare. It is designed to stop medical progress in its tracks, and it is doing so. Venture capital for new drugs and new medical devices has completely dried up, at least over a year ago. The venture capital companies just stopped putting money into anything with medical progress because they know that nobody's going to be able to make any money on it. That their plan if Obama was running health care in 1950, his solution to polio would have been price controls on iron lungs. <laughs> so basically, um, progressivism is the major threat to the America as we know it. Um, so the pillars of progressivism are the Federal Reserve, the IRS, and the income tax, 16th Amendment, and the regulatory state, the EPA. Uh, Obama's EPA basically just wants to stop economic growth. Yeah. It just wants to stop it. It doesn't like it. Um, it wants to stop it. All of them have the same flavor. They're experts unaccountable to the people who control, need to control everything. They need to tell you how many gallons your toilet flushes, what kind of light bulb you could use, what kind of car you can buy. Um, there's, there's really no end to it. Now it's, you've got to buy this health insurance and not this health insurance. Uh, progressivism is bad for freedom, it's bad for economic growth. And economic growth is my, uh, one of my interests. Economic growth matters a lot. If Vince Lombardi had been an economist, he would have said, economic growth isn't the most important thing, it's the only thing. This is a chart of three paths for the US economy. The blue one, the one in the middle, is what actually happened. If we had grown 10% faster, just the growth rate had been 10% higher, you would have seen the fuchsia curve, and right now GDP would have been 2.2 time, times bigger today than it actually is. I mean, the whole country would look different with just 10% over that period of time. If it had been 10% less, we probably would have lost World War II and we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have won the Cold War. So that's how important uh, economic growth is. Over time, it's the only thing that's really important. And economic growth matters because the future matters. And this presidential election is about the future. Presidential elections are about the future. Now, just some things. Um, this is just a parenthetical slide. Ec there are a lot of people say that economic growth doesn't solve the problems of Social Security. Yes, it does. You get the growth rate up to 3.5%, which is more normal for the US. All the problems of Social Security and Medicare simply go away. You don't have to have any benefit cuts. You don't have to have any uh, tax increases. Now, some reform might be desirable, but it won't be necessary for financial reasons if you get the economy growing at 3.5% a year. When the economy under Clinton was growing fast, every year, the Social Security Administration put out this huge report, and doomsday moved back a year every year. It was always 15 years away. And then as soon as the economy stopped growing, it went from Doomsday went from 200, 2016 to now. The Social Security uh, Fund is running a deficit now. And obviously, I mean, they think we're idiots. If economic growth, fast growth couldn't help the program, slow growth couldn't hurt it, you know? <laughs> now, here's something, here's just a bunch of numbers. What I, I wrote one column on what I call the conspiracy of, against economic growth. It's like everyone in Washington's got together, including Paul Ryan, to basically say, we are not going to talk about or run any numbers on what would happen if the economy grew faster than 2% a year. The CBO uses 2%, the Social Security trustees use 2%, the Obama administration uses 2% as the long-term growth rate. The US economy grew at 3.7 or so percent for since the founding of the Republic. It grew um, at 3.85% during the Bretton Woods era, 1947, 1971. World War II, we doubled the size of the economy in seven years. But all their cases are run at 2%, and they show doom. I mean, 2% for America, America growing at 2% 
is like getting, saying you're going to have 500 calories a day and, look, and, and arguing over recipes. It doesn't matter what recipe is used for 500 calories a day. You're going to starve to death. America cannot be America with 2% growth. We're not a 2% growth kind of people. That's not how we got here. That's not where, where we want to go. We don't want politicians like Obama telling us how we're going to adapt to 2% growth. <clears throat> now, something that people don't understand is only growth solves the problem of federal finances. No matter what else you do, you could, <clears throat> I, I ran a bunch of cases, uh, including one sort of simulating what the fair tax would do. Um, and uh, this, these were the numbers in uh, the, June 30th of 2010, the CBO came out with this long-term budget outlook, and that started the whole furor over the debt and the deficit. Uh, Simpson, or Simpson Bowles took that and ran with it. Ryan, Paul Ryan took it and ran with it. And they basically say we're doomed. And Obama's got this fantasy that you can have European tax rates without having European growth rates, which, of course, you can't. The reason Europe grows so slowly is because its taxes are so high. Growth is the only thing that matters. The red curve is, it says we implement the fair tax, we pick up two percentage points of GDP growth, and, and this is the fair tax at a 15% rate, 20% add-on. The fair tax law is 23% uh, inclusive and 30% uh, uh, exclusive, so I'm saying we do it at 20% or 15% if you want to do it that way, cut the tax take by 5.6 percentage points, which is like triple the largest tax cut in history, and you, the growth solves the problem. And this, all those curves amount to spending every dime Obama wants to spend. No, no uh, well, some of them say, I think the yellow one has both huge tax increases and huge spending cuts, and it still goes out of control. So you can't solve the problem with tax increases. You can't solve the problem with spending cuts. You've got to solve the problem with economic growth. <clears throat>